Are we rolling? We're rolling. Awesome. Well, Mamali, thanks so much for coming on to 27 Rouge. Sure, thanks. I start most of my interviews with this question, and this interview will be no exception. Um, and it's interesting to see the different directions that people take this. Who is Mamali? Um, okay. <laughs> Well, uh, Mamali, of course, I mean, for the first thing I can say I'm from Iran, which is, I think, it's a quite a special thing I always carry with me because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's not like you're coming from Sweden or, you know, it's like, I guess, for you as an American, you always, it's part, it became part of, like, your character. And then I I'm an artist. I moved to Paris uh, in 2005. I studied fine art here, performance and video. Uh, and then I was kicked out from school because I was doing like a series of performance. They were like quite uh, anarchist, I would say now, but I couldn't see that that way when I was younger. And then I moved to Germany for a year at the Academy of Dusseldorf. I studied there. It was a really good... Um, uh, opportunity for me to experience something different than French uh, art school system, and then since then I work as a you know as an artist, uh, filmmaker, uh, VR maker, uh, I would say advisor, curator. Uh, I try to do as much as I can. Like I do, like lots of collaboration with. Uh, sound artists with the uh, video artists mm. with uh, the like the vr project it is a long project with uh, another guy we do you know it's like any term of like creative process is it's interesting it's cool i remember must have been like 15 or no i was 16 or 17 and i had moved to paris alone um and I saw, I think it was the Grand Palais or somewhere, this Bill Viola exhibition. And I bought an enormous, like the size of this painting, I mean, an enormous Bill Viola poster uh -huh. that when, when I went back to New York, because, I mean, I was in high school, like school was starting again, I had to leave. So when I left Paris, uh, I brought this huge poster with me and I put it on my bedroom wall, my childhood bedroom wall. Uh, it's the Grand Palais, I was 16, the Grand Palais in 2014, July something, 2014. I don't remember what the exhibition was. I don't remember what was in it. Um, but I remember putting up that poster and it hangs there to this day. So when you talk about video art, my mind thought, as an impressionable 16-year-old, I was in Paris seeing some pretty cool video art. Yeah, I I always kind of envy these guys, the first generation of video art, like, because uh, the medium was completely a new discovery for all this guy, you know, like this old, this new camera, so you could, you know, and now all this, like, experimental process, uh, with scientific, with uh, you know, theorician, with all these like uh, artists and writers, and and I always like kind of when I was studying video, I was like, I wish I was from that generation, being like you know everything like or imagine like photography when like about like more than hundred years ago, mm. when, you know all this. But then that's why I push myself to VR because I had the same feeling when I was working on VR because I was like the, my collaborator, uh, Ali, he was like one of the first uh, VR guy. Like the, um, and everything we, we made, we knew like this is gonna be like a historical experimental process, you know, like learning from each other, trying to, and that's, I think, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's the beauty of the new medium, and um, but all, I think it's still we can do a lot with video, and and of course like the you know it's kind of a com complementary process from generation to the other one. It's like yeah. I was in Venice last year at the the film festival, and I remember I didn't I didn't watch a single movie. I spent all my time. 
um, on the Lido, which was, not on the Lido, was it, there was a separate island, little island, you know, Lido, right? I think it might be, it was the Lido, Lido yeah. for VR. Maybe you were there. Okay. Um, and uh, did you go to Venice last year? No. Um, but they, so they had this whole, a, a separate island just for immersive theater. And I got to try like 50 or 60 different um, virtual reality experiences. Some of them were interactive. Um, some of them were uh, like stationary. Some of them you were like walking around or you were in like a room. Uh, I interviewed, I actually interviewed a, I don't know if he's, he's French. This guy, Thomas Philpo. We interviewed him on the podcast. Um, I should reach out to him because he's, he lives in Paris uh, thinking of this, but it was cool. It was interesting. I, I think it still has some, some work. Uh, it's, it's, it's not without its issues, but it's cool. It's exciting. I don't know. Do you think it's like a fad or do you think it's a, a fixture? Uh, or we'll it's funny a because I, re I, I still remember like the first time I, seriously experienced VR was at Freeze Art Fair, actually John Ruffman, uh, and it was the Ouroboros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. talking about that. It was like you were sitting on a snake eating his tail, and then you were, uh, from there, you were starting in a really like a, you were in a trip. And then when I uh, removed my headset, I, I had, it was the opening of the fair and I had all these people having champagne and, you know, and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. this, um, you know, this connection with the, free, I mean, I wasn't there for, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. I don't remember, but I was like, wow, this is super interesting. Then, and, and then, uh, what we did with Ali through our VR experience, we, 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 we look at it as a lab in a way like we we care even about the before and after experience because as that point was remindable you know i remember that that point of like removing the headset and being completely you know disconnected then we yeah. started to working in a physical installation changing the elements before the before this experience for the audience and doing stuff during the experience and uh, you know like i think we can do a lot with vr but in um but I'm not sure about the direction right now because it seems like, I mean, artists do interesting stuff, but like just as a, like, as I said, no one for now, I mean, I don't know much artists, at least in contemporary art, they are constantly a focus on VR. Like they do one project and then maybe five years after or they stop completely. And that's, I think, um, it's kind of, you know, like what's happened with video art, what I said, and the video art had this uh, constantly reputation of, you know, like the experience one after the other, you know, like um, sharing this. But when we are, I have a feeling it's, it's kind of a, I'm talking about not the digital artists, I'm talking more about the, the visual artists doing we are. It's, it's already, from what I saw, it's constantly getting cut, like, you know what I mean? It's, that's why for us, unfortunately, it's also happened now for a few years, we had to stop, but we really like the idea of like adding experience one after the other thing. Like even with um, with some psychedelic drug, we try to make stuff to see how your brain uh, react. And we want, you know, it's like, it. it's the whole new world. And as I said, you can even work with the, uh, medicine and then the scientific and all, you know, all this like there's because it's like the whole question of perception is completely affected by uh, yeah. this new world and it's it's really cool to I mean for me that was the most interesting aspect about we are like how far we can go even like you know like even in physical installation we we designed uh, like the different position like the one of the episodes we we made you were sitting in the lotus position and killing people but you constantly remember we are in the peace position but you are doing like you know like the whole ergonomy stuff and the whole body position and all the like the even you know like this feeling of being suddenly blind and then 
being welcomed to a new world and all this transition of like how you mm-hmm. from one stage to going to the other stage you know it's I, I remember we did one of in one of the work we did here is a tunnel of people uh one uh, instagram they i mean it was about instagram uh the project called nerd Fung and and it was a tunnel of all this um uh selfie of people with this um instagram filter and then you had you felt like scared by it or like being in it i mean they, they were like in the daily life uh, normal people selfie videos from instagram but when it when you experience it in a tunnel with all this like uh, immersive sound and you had a feeling you were like they're gonna almost attack you or you know like this all like the um, claustrophobia of this all this mass information kind of like coming to you and you know anyhow it was uh yeah i think it's um it's a really interesting niche but i i think i mean what i experienced it i think would be really nice if artists can see it a bit more serious as a medium but it's it, the, the the difficult part is, is there is lots of um technical limit like in compared to the time and the energy and the budget consuming you're making a vr project probably if you make it in a in the 2d screen would be you know what i mean if it's really worth it to ex- yeah like that's that's always a question and 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 honestly myself i would say in the in the total experiences i saw i would say more than half of them i wouldn't see like why it was in vr you know it was just like the excitement of yeah. the new medium like that's all like, that that's a good point though right is like doing it just to why you don't you know doing it just to do it doing it just to say that it is in vr it's like putting for us was always like we always repeated like remember like in 10 years that gonna be a like a very primitive experience yeah and then if the contents are not rich enough it's gonna be completely rubbish yeah that was with my collaborator we were always Mm. repeating every day to remembering like not the excitement of oh okay this is like a wow you know for the first time but what happened in in the fifth time and then when you try the same thing in a 50 time you know like if you can make still people impressed with the or because it's just something new and people they never experience it then that's the phase of like uh, entertainment in vr is actually for me where the bug is like where the problem is coming because where the what is the, bark? yeah the, like the, it's the great problem of vr because mainly the vr project is limited to just entertain people yeah because people they never experience it mm-hmm. but for us it was like beyond that we said like okay imagine like in 10 years people they all uh try vr maybe ev- every week you know in the future we never knew and how you know how far we can go and keep the project still uh, interesting, the mm. content still, all it's probably will look vintage and retro because, you know, the, the evolution of the technology is super fast, you know, already since we started, when you look, when we look at the early stuff we made, it sounds already vintage, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. But yeah, but the content will, I mean, for us, was the, like the content needs to be always um, valuable. I think about the NFT stuff a lot, um, and there was some really good art, and it allowed you know democratized artists to be able to get their work in front of more people and to make, allow them to make money. But then there was also some a lot of silliness, you know, these cartoon apes selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, and, and this question of fixture versus uh, fad is fascinating because you have a new exciting technology you can use the medium in innovative ways to tell sort of you can make the most of the medium either whether it's telling new or different stories based on what's available or keeping things fresh and exciting rather than just riding on the buzz you know, writing on the buzz of, ooh, here's, here's VR. And, and then you're right, in 10 years, it's primitive. People are going to be like, 
this what you know what what is this? this is not art this is just a sort of commercial like nothing you know it, and i think i think people know but i mean it's tough right it, you, you know, we were talking about this before as an artist you also you you have to eat <laughs> you have to do business you have to go to the events and whatever and and one question i think about now with all these social media algorithms is the extent to which people are creating content but like organically or are they creating content because they know that's what their audience and or the algorithm is going to like and the algorithm rewards you for like basically feeding it what you a limited number of things there are some things that the algorithm doesn't prioritize and some things that the algorithm does and it's constantly changing and you figure out very quickly which if you try a bunch of different content which of it will like take off you know and so i i it's it's tough it's really tough to even answer this question but you know they call all of these everyone on tiktok calls themselves a creator they are creating things right but I wonder about I wonder whether a lot of the content production, particularly on social media that's happening, is is organic and the artist has something that they want to share. I mean, again, I don't know if we can call all of these people artists, but that the person has a story they want to tell, or whether they're simply they find what their followers like they find their thing and they just buckle down on it you know double down go in i don't know what do you make of this uh, i don't know if there's a question there i'm thinking no 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 it. yeah i mean it's i mean this is you know like when you work in a project about like like nerd fun was a uh, lens of, for us like to look at the whole all this phenomenal of social media, especially Instagram, then it's, I mean, like any other phenomenon has its own good side and, um, you know, and then the, the, the change is interesting. Uh, we, we, we analyzed a lot, like the whole, um, because we didn't want to be judgmental. We didn't want, want to be black and white kind of, um, decision maker about like okay social media is horrible or social media is amazing you know we were really like constantly looking like one of like for example one of the idea of, we found super interesting about social media was like how much it pushed the uh, the boundaries of like the like the intimate like people before social media they would never express themselves that much yeah you know this is like amazing but on the other hand like as you say there is also like lots of unnecessary information you deal with or you have to you know like also in the also like you can for example another idea we got through like or analyzed through instagram was like how much you are a um, narcissist person or a uh, virus Person. like how much you want to be the subject of the social media and how much you just want to observe and check the other people you can you know like it's kind of a almost it's like a therapy like you can get lots of element just through like you know like you would never think about these things if social media didn't exist then for us it was always like we we kind of like constantly we're like okay this is a positive point this is a negative point this is like something unnecessarily this is like needs to change you know i think my my real critic is like we are just i mean it's not a critic but the situation is we are diving in a really almost dangerous situation without knowing the cause like i think we kind of hear much more about like because we are into it now is a, pre a present moment it's it's not digestible like 100 percent yet because we don't even know like you know we don't know even like in 10 years if like having the phone 
with, you know, like, like this, if it is good for your neck, or, you know, all these things are like sounds for now. Okay. But maybe in 10 years going to create like the huge problems of like physical or mental or mm-hmm. then it's, as I said, it's like a lab situation. Like it's, everything is kind of experimenting in the very fast accelerate way. Then one day I wake up, I'm like almost scared and like very dark and very like, oh my God, we are going to the off road. You know, it's like the direction is not good at all. Da, da, da. And one day I'm like, oh, I'm completely fascinated by what we are able to make. I mean, like as a human being, but one of the aspects of my work is about like how, how much life is magical and as we, as a human being, how much we are able to make all this shit happening from technology to industry, to sport, to music, to art, to, you know, like mm, high rise, you know, we just forgive, we are looking for magic, but actually we, what we, I mean, the most magical thing is ourselves, you know, our bodies and our organ and whatever. And um, yeah, I'm like, and I think what, what I, the way I deal with all these things is like, uh, it's like, I just try to be in my own dream about it. Like if the, if the, the reality is dark, then try to create your own beautiful reality, you know? Somehow I'm like, and I think like, I like in, in that term, then you can, you understand all the people do TikTok or whatever, because they're kind of trying to just be, make fun of it or being, you know, like doing something, which I, I really also enjoy how like uh, people, they became actor of their, their own life. Mm. And this is quite interesting also, like, like you know, like, like I'm 41 uh, years old and then my generation, if you would create a content, you have to go to Hollywood, as you said, or, you know, or in any country to TV or media. But now you have like your phone in front of you. You can care, create whatever. And this is beautiful. Yeah. It, all the, the contents are trash. Doesn't matter, you know, because who said this is good or this is bad, you know, like people are, and this experience are just interesting, you know, but I think we need to like, just for me, it's also always like kind of, uh, zoom back Mm -hmm. and watch stuff in a wider perspective to see how you, you know, not just because the whole situation is push you to be there because the, 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 the amount of the contentity of the, 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 the content is huge. Then just being able to roll in it and digest it and try to see like what I, what I want from that, it's already, at least today, it seems for the capacity of our brain is already <laughs> too much. Then how you can get even a bit step back and watch it and da 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 and you, you look at it again in a different perspective sounds complicated. I agree with most of this and I find this to be fascinating. This concept of creating your own reality, your own dream world. I wonder where, you know, for some people where does the dream end and where does reality begin? I think there doesn't necessarily have to be a distinction. They're in a world on fire, the, wor- the world is on fire. I mean, there's bad things happening everywhere. There's parts of, you know, Paris is a beautiful city, there's, but there's some very dark and nasty corners, just like anywhere else in the world, you know. The nastiness manifests itself differently um, in different places, uh, but it's always there. The world is not, <laughs> to quote Rocky, Rocky Balboa, the world is not sunshine and rainbows. Um, and, you know, I don't think it, it would be an interesting world to live in, but each of us has an ability and a responsibility, I would say, to create our own reality and to see the beauty because there's always 
a degree of beauty, even in very bad circumstances. And I, you know, I, I try to I encourage people to ameliorate their circumstances to the extent that's possible for them. Um, but you've brought up a very good point. There's human life I th itself, I think, is a beautiful thing. And we ought to recognize that, especially in the days where, you know, where not not to get into a comparative thing. But we're living in Paris, or we're living in New York or whatever, one of these big, nice cities. Oh, I missed my bus. Oh, I, you know, all these little things. And you get angry. It's like, slow down there, tiger. Life, life, this is like ridiculously good where we are right now. This is, this is, this is just dreamy, you know? But even if we, we didn't have any of this, light, there could still be some beauty maybe. Yep. I think also like one of my um, issue is like, I, I mean, I go back from the beginning, like why I said I'm from Iran is uh, important things about mammalies because, uh, you know, Iran ge ge geographically. <laughs> geographically is kind of like this. I mean, the Middle East, the kind of center of the world. Then if I give you an example of like how I grew up, I mean, I was watching movies from Bollywood, like Indian movies, yeah. to uh, like Chinese movies, Japanese, like um, from like uh, the Gulf countries, Turkish movie, and then, you know, and not only movies, like the music, I mean, and then so on, of course, uh, European and American the most. And, but it's, but you are like, and then Russia on top, then, we, the way I grew up, it was always, I mean, it was very westernized, but it was always like some tendency of like, okay, looking also to the, to the East, to the different culture, to the, and then I was uh, privileged to be able to travel a lot. And I was like, discover all this different culture and continent. And, and then I just realized, unfortunately, like in the, in the way we grew up in the Western kind of society, I mean, like the influence of Western society in the whole world, it, it, we our direction is is a one big highway, and we are just all trying to, you know, like it's a one-liner future we see for everyone. And then I think what I'm, what I see with the, like a, a Gen Z. Use I think that yeah like I I think the for, for me is the, the hope is there because you start to look at the world in a um, it's not only one direction you know I see like people looking but uh, but still I think it needs to be more um, like the school of thought needs to be changed because it's it's too much. We are all too much influenced by capitalism, which is okay. But I mean, like, as I said, we, we didn't have the time to uh, to recognize what's happening, you know. If we were just like, if we were in the fast car, you know, like I remember Millennium, we thought like, okay, in 2020, the, it's going to be uh, a utopian world because we, can, we thought we're going to live with the help of technology and whatever we were imagining about like in 20 years. Yeah, we were flying like, cars. You know, like I remember still all this video clip of like uh, from Michael Jackson to Backstreet Boys and all this, you know, like all this like uh, spice shape. And then yeah. it was a pure positive, almost happiness and joy from the future. But then now we just realize, okay, no, this is, and then- We can't help ourselves. Yeah, because even the idea of satisfaction, it's it's one liner because in the in the Western culture, like mainly satisfaction is related to joy. Like, okay, if you want if you want to be happy, eat, have sex, drink, that you know, like drug and all you know, all this. Like, it's rarely someone telling you like, no, you can have satisfaction from fasting we are in the system like i feel like it was already decided for us kind of you know like what like, what was already decided for i us? mean we, we were accepted i mean i'm talking about mostly like generation of my parents and 
my generation, which I really like about your generation, is all about reconstruction. You know, like uh, like what I really like is look about you guys is like you won't easily say yes to any order or any. You know, like it's always like yeah. Why yeah. yes? Why no? Why I shouldn't do that? You know, it's it's already. I mean, all this like imagine like I give you an example like the word gender. Oh, my my whole life I hear it maybe, I don't know the same amount of like I hear it the last five years. Yeah. Or ethnic or all this you know all the question we are like. What is what eth what ethnic? Oh, know, ethnic ethnic yeah. questions yeah. you know but you know it's I think that's the beginning of the new era which is I'm very optimistic about. I think it's good to question things. In gen- like as a general principle, um, don't just accept things as true because that's the way you're told that they are. You're, you know, um, I think it can it can it can spiral into out of control sometimes when people have like yes, I believe that everyone should live their own reality. They're the own main character of the story. They're the own actor in their own life. I understand this. Um, but there are some, there are things that people have to like uh, agree upon in order to get along in society. I mean, I, I don't know. You ha- you can't fly. You don't jump out of a window. You know, you can't say I'm a bird. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump yeah. out of a building and fly, but I, I like I do I do think I, I'm not a huge fan of of post structuralism like the whole the whole you know postmodernist Foucault movement pers- personally um, I take ideological issue with it because I don't think it's necessarily productive for human flourishing, but at the same time. I agree with the spirit of it. And the spirit is we can't just accept things as they are. We should always ask the question. Now, I, I don't particularly think that th- that group of thinkers was, you know, Foucault and South and, and, and them were, and their contemporaries were asking necessarily good questions. But I think the fact that they're asking questions at all is, is a good thing. Like, I mean, this is, I haven't, I haven't thought about this. This is interesting. Mommy. Like there, there are, you know, what, like in France, a lot of times, what do you do for work? You do what your parents did. It's, it's, you know, your dad's a blacksmith. You're a blacksmith. Your dad's a baker. You have to run the bakery shop. Who's going to run the bakery shop? You are, you know, and that's that's what happened. And there there was not for a long time, frankly, I think in Europe, a lot of social mobility because people just sort of stayed where they were. You know, you did what your dad did and your grandfather before that and his grandfather before that. We are butchers. We are bakers. We are whatever. We're the ones who provide who slaughter the cattle in this town and provide meat or we're the ones who bake the bread or do the whatever. Now, I think there's more, but mom, why? But dad, why? And I think a lot of it is, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say it came from America, but certainly you see it in America. Like there's this trope, there's this like Disney movie trope of, um, those are your dreams, dad, not mine. And, it's kind of, you know, ironic and whatever, but it has taken effect. And I think that's a good thing that we are, I, I mean, you, right. You started off by saying, you know, I'm Iranian. I would, I would call myself American, even, even if I don't really live there anymore, because there are some things that are deeply rooted. And what's deeply rooted for me is this concept of self-invention of creating yourself. It's, it's, it's fundamental to the American tradition. America as a country was created 
relatively more recently than many other countries in the world. You know, it it shouldn't exist. There's no reason. You know, it, not, it had nothing like that had existed before. We're going to take people of different races, different religions, speak different languages. We're going to dump them into the same place, and we're going to say, "All right, get along with each other." What 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 unites us? Values, constitution, shared values. It's not united by race. It's not united by religion. It's not united by any because it's a hodgepodge of everything else. And what did that create? It create people had to create this new identity. Okay, now I'm not just Italian. I'm Italian American. Now I'm not just from you know uh, Irish. I'm Irish American. You know, and there's a difference. You're neither American. Like there's no native. I'm, the word Native Americans. So we're indigenous people. But beyond the indigenous people. There's not that many other like native Americans. And then they're not, they're, so they're not really like fully American. They're not fully Italian. What are there? There's all these hyphenated identities going on, which I, I, I think it's fascinating. I think it's a good thing. And I, I, I can't shake that from, I, like, I can't shake that Americanness in me. And now I think there's more of it than ever everywhere in the world of, of this questioning going on. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, as I said about, like, how, how, how you would be able to uh, have a wider perspective about what's happening. First of all, you start from your own individual life experience, right? And then I just, as you said, like, the, 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 this situation of the American situation, it started to be more like a global situation citizen like citizen of the world in in the way because you didn't really attach to any rules or any like a you know it's it's a different story when you go to to greece or iran or egypt or china you know it's this we we're still stuck with so many uh, tradition but you know it's which is again like there is not black and white things about it like it has its own value and it's not, has its in, the inconvenient in the way of like thinking, you know, but uh, I think what is really interesting, as you mentioned, like I more and more believe like the one can get to be a wider uh, point of view about like the whole situation or the one are able to experience this multicultural, like being the citizen of the world, being able to like, you know, you as an American living in Australia, me as an Iranian living in France, and, you know, like someone else from uh, China living in uh, UK, you know, like, I think this is, this is really help us to, as you said, organic, or, organically reconstruct and see the, 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 in a different angle, look at the things in a different angle, you know. And I think, as you said, like, I think American culture positively was the the base of this kind of school of idea of like how because of no um, not being attached to any rules or tradition or uh, ethnic or nation you know like it was just like it was built like as you you explain you know and I think that's that's a, another beauty of like the contemporary human being like mm. Mm. I do wonder I, w I wonder about identity a lot and the extent to which some of it's fixed some of it's baked in and and what can be created on top of that I think there's infinitely many combinations and variations people are changing but what happened, I think it's a mistake maybe to try to suppress or bury your nature, who you are, um, or the things that you can change. You are, you have certain experiences that shape things that are just out of your control. You were born where you were born, you know, yeah. and that sometimes people try to reinvent everything. You can never reinvent everything. There's always like a canvas. You can paint the canvas, but you're starting with. You start there's there's some sketches on there to begin with you know there's there's a blueprint maybe sure. okay tell me about some of your work 
What are you working on right now? Uh, these days I'm like, well, I mean, I'm creating my own storytelling out of all this. Like, if I go back a bit... Um, what kind of work do you do as, <laughs> as a whole for the audience who yeah. might not know? Yeah, I do it like installation, as a, like a, like a medium. Uh, that means like sculpture, objects, video, light, sound, um, performance sometimes. It's like the whole... I can kind of call it like total art. Like yeah, yeah, it's it's the whole immersive experience, and uh, but it's it's changing by each show has its own uh, theme and subject. You know, like recently, I'm very focused of like how much we are similar to apes and gorillas. Like I make all this like the I saw one of the epoxy um busts or I don't know what they're called of the gorilla. Yeah. And it looked awesome. Especially I just realized I mean by, by making, you know, by collecting all these videos of uh, you know, like monkeys and apes and I mean all this like the, um, I just realized first of all I mean as we know like how how similar we are especially in certain sense like when we are angry for example is we are even more similar to the, to the apes when we are happy you know it's like and then I, I I create my own storytelling by using like means mainly uh ape and gorilla, but other animals also to, to create my own story with this fable of like, because also where I'm coming in Iran, we have lots of old stories with animals and fable and like, you know, like we have this very uh, interesting book called Kalile Demne. It's just like coming from Sanskrit uh, language. It was kind of like the time like between India and Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it's is the whole all the all the characters are animals, mm -hmm. Kalila and Demne. And uh, and and for me, it's it's kind of the same thing, but it's more abstract. It's more open because we are living in a different time, and there is not any moral conclusion. You know, there is like it's just again, it's different layer of information yeah like you can as an audience you can just create your own uh, you have to your create your own well we conclusion. didn't i guess uh, with, back then we see it in the world in that way right? it seems like we need we needed more to give a, like a you know the the, the 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 formulation was like you know you don't have so many ancient stories like the the end is open for example you know it needs it needed to go to a uh, sometimes morally or not moral, but kind of a conclusion or a closure, closure, you know. But for me, it's like, as as I believe everything is kind of relative, everything is kind of in the ambiguous stage, then I also leave my work, actually, I exaggerate even in this ambiguity. Like I would say uh, in my film, for example, I choose a character, like I can choose... Scott as, a, as my subject and I was like I oh, Scott like the deal is like I'm gonna make your portrait almost looks like a documentary but the deal is like I can manipulate your reality as much as I I want to create this ambiguity of like almost arriving to the hybrid por portrait of you between your reality and what I, I as a maker I added to your reality like what is my imagination and what I want to see from you, you know, or it's all also like, I mean, you should this see is it interesting. really, yeah. You make films like yeah, this? Yeah, I make like a long feature film. Like Where that. can I find them? I, I mean, I, I'm making it a second one, but the first one I can send you the link. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. actually did it with my parents. Okay. And then my parents, well, it was kind of... In in Tehran, you, follow, yeah, you yeah. followed them around with the camera? Yeah, for two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and then the, it's, it's funny because the ambiguity goes even further because constantly as a viewer, you're like, oh, fuck, these are... They are... Uh, 
his parents, yeah. you know, how he dared to ask them like this weird act or, you know, but because I, the deal with them was like, mom, you are my actor now. You're an actress now. You're not anymore my mom. Then yeah. it's, you know, uh, I think because also I had this experience myself in, um, in, in, in my reality, like, you know, I did an interview for Apartamento magazine and then uh, when they sent me to review the interview, it was full of uh, misunderstanding. Maybe somehow in purpose, somehow just maybe I didn't explain well, you know, like our perception is, mm. you know, if you go to to watch a film, like when we came out, I, I saw a different film than you, like everything is like that, you know. Then I was about like, shall I tell them that this the interview is not correct somehow? But I was like, who really cares? I mean, like how much you can control your reality, you know, how much you can like, i give you another example to make it clear. Like if you're a researcher, you make research about, let's say Picasso. It was more than like hundred or thousand books about him. I'm sure if you start to read them, you can find that so many points are you know, not the same, then it's not like the writers wanted to invent his life because it's just the whole, the, the whole life is about that, you know, and then I'm, by exaggerating this, I'm just reminding to my audience, then don't believe to any reality, you know, like if, because this is written in New York Times, doesn't mean this is real. I mean, you are a writer, you're a journalist, you know, like, it became like a fact point when he's in media, but like who write it, you know, who is like, I invented the, this reality and I, I know I'm lying, but you don't know I'm lying, you know, but we live in the way, like some facts we, I think we believe unnecessarily too much to certain facts, certain reality. And we, as a human, it seems like we were forced to make some belief and some trust. I guess we needed that, but I don't need that. I actually love living in the completely ambiguous world, world. Like nothing is, nothing has a fixed um, sense or a fixed, uh, you know. Like I also, I, I can say like through through the time and then century, things change. You know, like the meaning of bad and good is. You know, what we are living today, if you make a video and show it like 500 years ago, people would think like a techno party would be completely a zombie. But we enjoy that today, you know, is that who said this is bad or good, you know? Yeah. It's funny when you... Sometimes I think about that I was part of the underground rave culture in Australia. And I think sometimes about what watching a video of us with no sound and no drugs would be like. And I've seen videos of us and I turned off the sound and it's weird. All these people with sunglasses at night and lollipops, and, you know, they do kind of look zombie-ish. You know, I wouldn't say it's an activity that has a particularly high return on investment. It is hedonistic. Um, I knew a friend. I cont I continue to know this guy. One of my friends. He was at a rave in L.A. And the DJ slit his own throat on stage and like committed a suicide in front of all these people. Oh, wow. Okay. And I don't know. I don't think my friend was, act no, my friend had gone home. He saw the video afterwards. He'd gone home like 30 minutes before this happened. It's, that's some heavy, that's heavy. You know, and then people, they're not even sure if this is Did happening. Me the I mean, like, if you know who was that and uh, what. I, mean, uh, was, uh, I could try to find whatever yeah, information, but I don't, mm. I don't, uh, like, there was no documentary made. Sure, sure. It was, yeah, yeah, this no, was filmed on, like, iPhones. Mm. 
And then, you know, people in the crowd, are, they don't know what's happening. Are they on acid? Is this actually happening or is it in my mind, you know? Mm. But no, it, it happened. And when I was in the rave scene, I saw, nobody slit their throats. But there was, there was violence sometimes. There was uh, some dangerous, dangerous things going on. Um, beyond the obvious, you know, beyond the, the overdose, um, which I mean, that that stuff happens as well sometimes. Um, I, but you know, one time this kid, we were in Sydney. Uh, he he, you know, he got in a fight with someone, and and anyway, his friends like came and and they they broke this guy's jaw. Um, and he. Like they, they they dislocated his jaw because he was on the ground and they were like kicking him. Uh, raves raves are not. I, I don't know. I'm just you were talking about like people 500 years ago would think they're zombies. Raves can be a lot of fun, of course. Um, but there's a there's a dark seedy underbelly to them, and it depends where you are, who you're with, what you're doing, like what you know what the vibe is but I, I i've had some really amazing experiences at raves and i've also heard some fucking horror stories from this scene i don't know sorry to go down this this road <laughs> you mentioned techno parties and i think about it it's strange right like i mean you can't make electronic music without electronic equipment so 300 years ago they hear all these noises they would think it's like uh you know, also, witching yeah sure also like we're like a factory chicken you know like i always i mean for me this is the answer of like wow how we managed to you know arrive to this stage which is we're a factory what chicken like, oh chicken you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah the one like you have the one growing in the nature and you have the one in a in a factory you know and then I we are factory chicken yeah, oh kind of yeah. Romilly, this is that's good <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like when you, you know, you you were born in Caesarean, you call it Caesarean? It's yeah. a French word, I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, like everything is artificial, chemical. And the, all the food in the U.S. with these weird additives, you okay, know, this and, GMOs, the, yeah. the, les OGM, the whatever. And once you accept this reality, it's just like, it is a part of it, you know, like why we are all attracted to drag or, I mean, like, not, I'm not talking about only ecstasy, all these pills and antidepressants. Anything, anything, anything. Why are we wearing clothes? Why because are we part the of haircuts? Our gene now, you, you know? know? Because it's just like, it's, it's part of a reality. And then, but that's why, I mean, like, it's, when you have different reality, the sense also change with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I think that... We are factory chickens and that there's a lot of beauty, I mean real beauty, and flourishing to be found by returning to nature a little bit. There's this Chekhov quote that I really like. Man is the only animal who refuses to be what he is. Hmm. Nice. I like that. It's true. We're fighting. We're, we're not. We're, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a chicken. I'm a zebra. I'm this, you know. You're a chicken. I think humans are extraordinary at the rationalizations and the explanations we come up with for our own existence. But it's hard to think that we're just, Earth is just like a rock in space in an infinitely large expanding universe. I mean, <coughs> sorry, zoom tight. Yeah. How do you make sense of, of this? If we're a rock in space, if we're just floating around, you know, and we're all little inconsequential ants, how do you, how do you, how does one find Meaning, if, if there is meaning, I think there is meaning. I, I didn't really understand your question. It's like, how, do, you were, I, yeah, yeah. How, how, do, how does, 
in, in, in a universe, in a, in a incredibly large and, and indifferent universe, how do we find meaning in our lives as humans? Um, well, I mean, I guess we have different approaches. Like, as I said before, I mean, like, I think there is some people, they, they have tendency of create barrier and you know life has a meaning if you have a structure for it but I'm for me it's the opposite like I I'm always looking for a different reality like different like for me like imagination is the base of like like I think I, not that mean like I'm against that any structure is that it's not that mm. but I think like the openness to accept different reality, I think that's the way we can evolu make the evolution happening, you know, like this, because that's kind of a way of like being out of this jail, you know, because I think for me, they're like every belief, every uh, imagination can become part of a reality if we really believe that you know like it's it's really I, I don't know the example is like if I say like the moon doesn't exist you know yeah I, I totally I believe that it can re create a different reality a different path to go different you know <laughs> then I'm yeah I think we arrive at the, the for me at least we arrived to the sense of like after 2000 to you know like all these the years i think now maybe it's time i mean i feel we we are ready to to finally answer so many like mysterious questions like about the parallel world about like because there is no surprises anymore for a human being you know like it was when for me like when i was teenager when my cousin said like uh, there is something called internet in the future you can buy stuff from there i was like are you nuts like this is i mean i was surprised and shocked in the term i couldn't even accept it mm. the most basic thing today but what you can what it can make you shocked today right what can i say like you're like okay shock maybe for like 10 seconds and you're like okay it can happen you know? then that's a great stage of like uh creating new reality and and finding the the things we were not ready to to answer you're right about the state of dream like in my work i do also lots of research about like uh in consciousness dream uh the state of like mind um through like the drug like ketamine and um you know all this as I said, like the the, the 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 question about the brain and the eye and the organ and the, like the um, perception again, it's a very like how, you know how all these things are connected. And then I'm sure we are not too far to to open the gate, you know. The gate to what? To to the information we thought we we are we wouldn't we are I mean like. Before. It's like spiritual information? Can be also, but it's more like, a, it's it's just like, you know, for example, like human being was always like, we don't know where we are from and we don't know where we are going. That's, mm -hmm. That was the philosophy that the, I grew up with. But I think we are not too far to understand where we came from and where we are going. All this mystical question, you know. What brings you joy and fulfillment? What brings you joy and fulfillment? Um, being diving to this, all these ideas, you know, and create my, I mean, like, again, feeling like gifted to be able to create a small portion of this imaginary world and and being able to show it to others like but is it imaginary i mean it, you breathe life into it 
Yeah. Uh, because I think the whole idea is not like, it's not one person can open this case. It's, it's the, you know, it's a, the whole connection. It's, it's a chain. Like we create this chain. and But it's, as I said, like I feel closer to the one they are looking for this different reality, not the one or uh, can find a joy in the what structures or realities already, you know. Right. Yeah. My life was kind of a Disney movie. Like if I tell you about like how I grew up and how I arrived here with no money, I didn't know anyone in Paris. I didn't speak the language. And now I'm living in a nice flat, being able to do all my... Like, I can say almost I don't have any dream didn't come true except few, you know, and then I know, like, hopefully, I mean, the one is related to me, I feel like I can make it. And that's, um, I think that's because I always believe to a certain other uh, um, power. I, can, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of like, a, yeah, like it's, it's the belief, I think, it's the... In a, in a more, in a spiritual, higher power energy being? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's definitely spiritual it's because it's beyond physical. Mm. But if if you label it in the spiritual, what we have in, again, in mainstream culture, no. No, but a lot of things. Yeah, well, of course. Art. You know, people there's, call all kinds of things art yeah. that maybe aren't really art. It's yeah. still very wide, you know, there is no label for it. I don't know where is it. I, I sometimes I'm like, you, you say like, thanks universe. I mean, like, okay, is it really universe? Is it like, thanks whatever, you know? Or, I mean, like, I, this is, I, I tattoo this, um, it's, it's an Arab word, but we use it also in, in, in Iran, in Farsi. Uh, it's written shok. Mm. It means gratitude because I think like every day I have to just be thankful to the to something, but I don't I don't know what it is. But I'm also like again this like I like this ambiguity of like why I don't know what it is, why I need to know, you know, like or maybe I will answer it one day. <laughs> like <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that interesting that you don't need to know what it is. Just it's okay to know that it's there, that's enough. Because you just, I mean, by, by age, I just learned the one I really, I think they're, 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 for me, the one I really see them as a spiritual person are the one they don't, um, they don't label themselves in this categories you know that's why i said like the right it's it's not about the category or the label they yeah. just are yeah is there anything else you'd like to discuss about your art or your life or paris well we have paris anything? more and more it's, 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 you do it's, it's a night nice, i mean it works for me as a like it's a nice combination of Order and disorder. Yeah? Yeah. In what sense? What's the disorder in Paris? Well, I mean, like, it's it's a mess city. Like, it's, yeah. uh, you know, like I, I was living also two years in Amsterdam and I just realized, like, how much I feel much come to because Amsterdam, I mean, Netherlands is the opposite. It's, it's nice, like, tidy, uh, and clean. Yeah, and I got so many fine every day, every week. I had letters from like, oh, from whatever like, your bike is parked in the wrong. Yeah. Da, da, da. It's not just like also I have, because I again I because I'm coming from Iran. Like I know like the total mess, which is like my country. Like it's and then here is as I said, it's I feel nice melange entre les deux. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. And what about uh, Tehran versus Paris? Do you think the two cities are similar in some ways? I can't say about the cities, but I think definitely, uh, I mean, like modern Iranian culture is it's inspired a lot with French culture because French culture was a dominant, dominant culture in the like 
from 17th century to 16th century to early 20th century, you know, like we, all the elites and all this, you know, like like any other sitting outside drinking coffee the cafes yeah, that's what i don't know I if that's saying. french or where that's from but it's it's but something even language like all these like latin words coming from french uh, pronunciation into or language and also like yeah i mean like i don't know like even talking about champs Elysees or you know like it's funny because even in Tehran you feel like people no, already like they were they've been in Champs Elysees because yeah. you know it's really like a this kind of the how can I say like a weird connection you know mm. and you're wait you said you're 40 41 yeah so I and you can do the math so you but so you came after the revolution you were a young boy I I, I you were just the born. Revolution happened in seventy nine. I was born in eighty two. Eighty two. I yeah. I was born actually. That's too much the, math the for me to have year, done. <laughs> yeah. No worries. I was born in the first year of the eight years wars between Iran and Iraq. Hmm. Then the then I the war was finished when I was eight years old. Then we had all this like this tension and you know like the, all this. A weird situation after the war and then you know it's in you know, Iran is always kind of a, you always have surprises in the like, I mean in a good and bad sense like. do you think as as a young boy like when you were a teenager were you making art a little bit were you interested in art as a 12 year old or 13 yeah. year old yeah I used to uh, I don't know if I, I always thought it was everywhere at least in Iran but I just find out recently no it was only in my family I used to have this um uh, how you say like the cahier um, like the small cahier notebook notebook yeah which I used to create all these characters like like some boy some girl yeah. with name and with clothes and like and I could spend like hours, like telling like they party together, they went to vacation, and yeah, I think that was probably my <laughs> early artworks. And then, and then I study art. Uh, I started study art when I was seventeen years old after mathematics. Yeah, cool. Yep. After mathematics, I was never very good at math. I took calculus. That was the last math I took. Um, it never made sense to me. I, I was always, I liked writing and I was good at writing and I could write across anything, you know, history, philosophy, English. Great. I was, a, I was an excellent writer. High school is good student. Now I do it professionally, but, and then science, the only science I liked was biology. I did not like chemistry. I did not like physics. Uh, I never even took physics. Um, because it was like there's only one answer. It has to be, it's so exact. If you make a mistake up here, you know, by the time you're a few steps later, everything's wrong because the first calculation was wrong. But some people love that methodical, logic, uh, logical approach to things. I hated it. So that's, that's really surprising to me that you were studying mathematics and then you became this awesome multidisciplinary artist. Wow. Yeah, I think it's funny that the uh, uh, opposite aspect yeah. <laughs> impact in my... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Math. Well, you know, I think we need both. We yeah, need of course. Both. Also, I think in certain age, you're just... I mean, I was like that. I was like watching something and like analyzing a situation to be completely against that, you know, like, because also like my country situation was full of, um, controversial situation. Like, you know, controversial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I was like, you had to always rethink and like, because you were like feed, but like so many things you knew it wasn't, Again, like what you said about 
like uh, in in America or you know in the dead in a Disney movie for me organically was in that way like because I I could feel like this is not this is not me this is not true this is like just they try to brainwash you or manipulate you you know then I was always kind of a, but I didn't know of course I was like probably 10 years old sometimes 15 years old you know you just realize much later like how you drive your life so that that wraps up all my questions on these nice big thick sheets of paper I, I couldn't um, I don't have a printer at home but there's this architectural firm like in my building, like a arch this architect's office. So I walked into the architect's office because I see them every day. And I said, hey, guys, I need you to print print something for me. And they printed it and they brought it out on this extra thick, <laughs> nice paper. Nice. And I thought, I'm going to ask them to print stuff again. You, this you is, can keep it as a souvenir. As a souvenir, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But thank you so much sure. for coming on to the show. It was a real Likewise, pleasure. Yeah.